Hi everybody, I am back with another video. Today this is all about sharing my autumnal curriculum, I guess, for my preschooler and my young toddler. So when I say curriculum, I don't really mean like you need a curriculum for that age group because you definitely don't. I think daily activities, daily chores, walks and that kind of thing are pretty much all that young children need, just lots of love and doing. But saying that, it is quite handy to have some guides, some good books, to give you ideas when you feel stuck, and also to help you create a rhythm which is really essential to happy children. So I thought I would share some of the books and things that I am using to kind of create our own rhythm this coming season. Now, my eldest son is three and a half, so he was due to go to preschool, but I decided not to send him. Um, for health reasons, I just felt like it was safer keeping him at home at this time and just see how it goes. So these are the books ooh, <laughs> and things that I have found that are really um, great at creating what I feel are the important things for him to learn about. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go through them. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas too if you're in a similar position. Um, but these would also be nice things just to have at home regardless of whether you're homeschooling or not. So the first thing I wanted to show you are um, nursery rhymes. So I've got a new version of this nursery rhyme book. It's the Mother Hubbard, um, it's the Mother Goose one, and it's really nice, but this is an old one we have as well, which has really beautiful drawings in it. You can see there. And this was my husband's when he was a boy. So uh, nursery rhymes are fantastic at helping to build language. They've got that lovely um, rhythm to them and they obviously rhyme as well. So nursery rhymes are all really, really good one to read with your young toddlers or older toddlers. Another thing that would be really nice are fairy tales. I think my boys are a little bit too young to enjoy fairy tales yet, but if your child's in a different developmental stage, fairy tales might be a good one. And um, this one that I have is Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales, illustrated by Harry Clark. Um, I bought this when I was living in Dublin, but um, there is also a Grimm's fairy tales illustrated by Danielle Dresner, who I really love. So I'll link that below because I think that will be the one that we do invest in when I think the boys are ready but your kids could very well be ready, even if they're the same age. So moving away from fairy tales and nursery rhymes, um, I am also going to be teaching Rupert a little bit about the alphabet. Um, I don't want him to sort of fall behind, I guess, and I presume they will be doing alphabet work in preschool. So one of the things that I know he is going to love, we have actually looked at this before, it's the Waldorf Alphabet book. Now this is really lovely and there are other books like this I found on Amazon as well, which I'll link below. But each page is illustrated with the letter and then there are also lots of illustrations that you can spy beginning with the letter as well. So you can talk about the rainbow, the river, the rooster, the rabbit, the robin, the radish. So this is, I think, a really, really good book for those young kids that love to sit down and look at pictures and then they're gonna point out all the words that begin with the letter. So I think it's a really, really good introduction. I've also seen with the Waldorf um, inspired approach to education is that kids will sometimes copy the pictures out with their crayons and pencils and um, that would be a nice activity too if you've got a slightly older child. Now, as part of that, um, work. I also have invested in the Habitat Schoolhouse. Um, they have a whole sort of um, pre-K kind of curriculum based around the, le the, the letters of the alphabet and I will show you one now. So here is letter C and in it they've got um, just like activities They've also got like uh, some basic counting. Um, there's maps and things that you can colour. Look, counting again. Um, an activity. This is cloud painting. There is a page on art study as well. Um, so that's Claude Monet. Um, a bit more counting. They do shape work as well. There is um, a study on something. And this one's on a carrot. There is a picture of a carrot in here. I've got it all mixed up, which isn't great for this video. <laughs> There's also color mixing for the letter C. So um, that's a fun activity. 
Then of course they have the letter C that you can color in with your child and they can trace that as well. There's a matching activity. This is the carrot in detail. Um, uh, there's some tracing and then there's a letter. There's a number as well to go with it. So again, you can do tracing, coloring, some basic counting, um, and then there's a recipe. So that comes with every single letter of the alphabet, and um, that's the Habitat Schoolhouse curriculum. So I thought that would be a really nice thing to tie in. Now, some of those activities Rupert is not able for yet, and he's developmentally quite delayed anyway, so I have sort of going to adapt that as I go and just see what he likes. Um, I have tried the alphabet book already with him and he loves it and we have done some of the letter A and it was amazing actually the things he was able to do um, really surprised me and then there was other things like the counting which he just wasn't ready for but again your child might be really obsessed with numbers and counting and I think what's nice about this is that you can pick and choose and grow with your child which I think is really great and they don't feel stressed or they don't feel like overwhelmed by anything because you can just put certain things aside and focus on what your child really thrives at. So another sort of printable thing that I got is the Whole Family Rhythms Autumn Guide. This is so beautiful. I have her entire series. Um, they're created by Megan Nielsen, I believe. And what this does is each week of the um, season this is September week one it gives you a theme that you can work with if you wish this is bees and honey working hands there is a finger game this one's all about bees a little story there is a focus on a weekly hike there's usually an activity for the parent or caretaker and there's a recipe this has got millet bowls with honey and then she has a little focus on colouring and she usually gives a suggestion for colours. She says yellow and red and um, watercolour. Then there is a craft that's appropriate for that sort of preschool age. This is rolling candles, which would be really good fun. I'm actually going to leave rolling candles until uh, winter because I thought it would be a nice one to do. But again, you could definitely follow this as a kind of curriculum. And then there's beeswax modeling. Now I'm not doing beeswax modeling this year because I think my boys are both too young for it. Uh, beeswax is much harder material. So I think you need a little bit more fine motor skills, which neither of my boys have yet. So we're just gonna be using salt dough or play-doh instead of the beeswax. Um, and then, yep, yeah, it just carries on going. There's thing about apples. So this is something that I always have at hand. It's very, um, easy to do it's perfect for that preschool age or even slightly younger and actually you could buy that and it would have everything that you need in order to give your child of that age a really good and um, wholesome education there's the cooking the coloring the walk nature walk and, and songs and finger plays like that's perfect it's really great um resource by Megan so love that another beautiful resource that I found on Instagram is the little oak learning autumn rhythm it's similar to whole family rhythms it's got a breakdown of each week each week has a theme this is harvest and then I'm just going to give you a little peek inside this is some of the nature activities that you can do so quite crafty and um, just like that and then there's another week. The season comes with plenty of stories that you can um, read out with your kids. There's also these beautiful little nature theatres created out of paper. And they come with little characters. You can cut out these displays and backgrounds and create these beautiful stories. And then um, there are also the stories that you can read out. And there's also finger plays included and recipes. So this is what the finger plays look like. This is Intimacy Spider and uh, you can cut these out and you can, I keep them in a folder just to keep everything together, but you could, you know, you could stick them up on the wall or whatever you like. So that is the um, Little Oak Learning Awesome Rhythm, which is beautiful. So, right, I've got a few more books that I'm gonna show you now that also help building a rhythm. And one of the ones that I love, this is quite new to me, is The Meadow Sweet Year, volume one by Caroline Ackworth. Now this is a book I got probably a month ago and I was really unsure whether to get this. 
I knew that it was based around um, creating a group. So I knew it was gonna be full of group activities and obviously that's not what I'm doing here. So I was like, oh, is this gonna be worth it? But I am really, really glad that I did get it because I am really in interested in the Waldorf, Rudolf Steiner approach to education. And there is nothing like that up here where I am. So I can't really go to a group um, to experience it. And obviously with COVID that's impossible anyway. So this book gave me a really good peek into what it would be like if I was sending my kids to a uh, preschool play group that was inspired by the Steiner approach. And that was really invaluable for me because that's kind of the rhythm and the feel I want to give my children. Um, this book is full of beautiful pictures. Um, and like I said before, yes, it does follow the whole day of a group, but you can completely use this for yourself. There are rhymes, finger plays, um, ideas for little snacks, um, there's stories and crafts um, throughout the year and then there's a little breakdown timetable. I think it's really beautiful. I do highly recommend it if you are at all interested in Waldorf and Steiner. I think you will like this a lot. It's very, very beautiful and lots of gorgeous photos in it too. So I do like that and it's helped me create a rhythm too and give me an idea of what um, to do with my kids, especially actually reading it, I realized I didn't really need to do too much. And um, you know, it's very easy to get a bit carried away and try and like give yourself so many activities to do in a day. But I think reading that I realized simple is better and less is sometimes more. So another nice book I have that's full of activities is The Joy Journal by Laura Brand. Uh, Laura's created a great book here, full of beautiful crafts, a lot of them based around nature. There's bubble painting, wild weaving, pressed flower jars, moon sand, which is a fan favorite. So plenty of sensory fun for kids in this. Um, Laura's done such a great job. Um, I love this, very, very beautiful. If you haven't got yourself a copy, you need one. It's so good. <laughs> um, another good activity book is The Unplugged Family by Rachel Jepson Wolf. And um, this has got lots of lovely little recipes that are all seasonal. I'll go into the autumn one, planting bulbs, uh, creating felted acorns, a wax garland leaf, uh, wax leaf garland, a gratitude tree, um, a little get together with food, um, lanterns, so all sorts of nice things. Slightly older children for this one, maybe um, six plus, but still a nice resource to have. And I've really enjoyed looking at that and getting some ideas about what I want to do with the kids for autumn. And definitely I was thinking for Halloween, um, I'm gonna do some costumes, probably hand make them and um, get some lanterns and just have so much fun with the kids. So that's given me lots of inspiration for activities I can do around the idea of Halloween. Um, and then I have got another book. This is another crafty book. It's called Making Peg Dolls. Now, I would have never bought something like this before I got into the whole Waldorf thing and obviously had children. This is, would have not been my cup of tea at all. But I'm now at this point in my life where I think this is super cute and I'm determined to make some very sweet little peg dolls for the boys. Peg dolls can be as simple or as complicated as you like. And I actually really like the ones that are just, I'm gonna show you, um, like really, really simple, like these ones here. And that's cute old boys playing with, just the simple colored ones. Um, and I think sometimes the ones with the little, just the felt um, hats and stuff are very cute. I think I've marked a few here. Yeah, I really like this one, the gnome family in a toadstool bag. So you can see them there. So these are just like lovely because they are homemade toys that you can give your kids and you can actually make these with your children as well. If you've got a child that's quite crafty, they'll probably love making these. And then you've got gorgeous homemade toys that you can play with um, that are really tactile and lovely and not commercial and shop bought, which I think is important. I think it's good when your kids can see you putting love and time into making toys for them. And then there's that sense of respect and also understanding of the effort that goes into making toys. Anyway, I've got two more books to show you before I finish up this video. These books are full of rhymes, poetry and stories um, for the season of 
autumn but also this one is all year round so i'll start with this one this is new i've literally just got this today i'm so excited i bought this one directly from winstone press who's the publisher and they actually sent me a couple of um postcards and a little um bookmark with a quote and i thought i'd just share that because some of you might quite like the idea of getting those if and you will if you just buy them from the publisher um this is autumn and in it we've got loads of poems i don't know how you can see all that but for example there's one about an acorn a farmer rose a little witch autumn winds lots about wind pumpkins farmers goblins um robins the weather like they all sound like they're going to be really good there's um a whole section on songs again all very autumnal and then there's stories as well there's Autumn Story, Crossing the Sea, Little Ant, Autumn Blanket, Giant Turnip, The Kite, and Little Grey Pony. So I think we'll enjoy these a lot. I was really unsure whether to get this because the reviews were very mixed on Amazon. Someone had said that they were very religious, but there is nothing religious in this, which I like personally. I didn't want a religious book, um, but yeah, very, very sweet. And I think this will be a really good resource. There's also the sheet music for some of the songs, which is useful. I have a recorder, so sometimes I do that for the kids. Um, it's the only instrument I can play. I can play the piano, but pretty badly. This book here is A Child's Seasonal Treasury by Betty Jones. This one is great. It has a whole section for just general uh, all year round. There's a whole alphabet poem there, um, birthday verse, cleaning up nighttime stories uh, some of them have sheet music on them there's also activities for group things so um you know gathering in a circle and doing sort of games and there's finger plays as well and ideas for crafts and artwork which is nice so simple sort of dolls and things uh, if i show you quickly the autumn section just so you have a better idea so it starts off with a little illustration and she has a little description of autumn then there's the verses and poems, and they're all really lovely. Um, lots of beautiful drawings in it. Some of them are nice and short, which is great. Then there's the autumn movement and creative drama. And this is where some of them you could definitely do um, with just a couple of kids or one kid, and then other ones are more like for groups of children. So after that section, there is uh, Autumn Finger Plays and Riddles. And then there's a section on Autumn Games. The Autumn Games are quite um, group focused, just to let you know that. And then there's Autumn Art and Artwork. So things to do with leaves, um, making a herb dream pillow, crayon resist ghosts, a homemade pinwheel, lanterns, Thanksgiving beads, pots, rattle, things like that. All really nice activities, actually. I do think they're all really nice. nice. Um, and then there's autumn cooking and baking. So actually, you really loads in this. You definitely get um, a lot of ideas in this little volume, and I really like it. And another idea, I know I said that that was my last book that I was going to show you, but I did find two more, so I'm just going to include them quickly. The, this one here is All Year Round by Anne Druitt. This is very similar to this one, but it just has a little bit more detail about the actual celebrations during each season. So I will show you autumn. So again, autumn starts with a little, I suppose a sort of setting the tone, I guess. Um, and then there's a description of autumn, a breakdown of the festivals of autumn, and um, a little bit about the seasonal table. Then there is a story about the autumn gnome garden, a bit about Lamis, a recipe for a loaf of bread, um, information on Harvest Thanksgiving, and then activities like drying apples and pears, stringing up onions, creating corn dolls, um, working with conkers, teasels, there's songs. Again, then we go to the next celebration, which is Michaelmas. There's recipes and activities and songs for that one too. And then there's Halloween and so on. So this is a great one for celebrations. Um, while this one is just about really about the season, this one is the celebrations, but then you also get the stories, the songs, 
um, the crafts and ideas to celebrate it. So really nice. I do love that one. I definitely got quite a lot of books, I think. <laughs> I may have an addiction. Um, and the final book, I promise this is the last one, is Heaven on Earth by Sharifa Oppenheimer. This one is a nice one as an introduction to creating rhythm for very young children. And this is just, I'll just show you the contents really quickly so you have an idea what's in it. So it breaks down the idea of celebrating festivals, word on rhythm, how our young children learn. Um, there's a chapter on indoor play, outdoor play, wonder of stories, artistic experiences, um, creating your family culture. So really nice um, book, very in depth, and really gives you a very good understanding of how to approach young childhood with the sort of Rudolf Steiner ideas, um, which are sort of very creative and lots of outdoor time. So really, really nice, such a good primer, such a good book to introduce you to all that if you are new to it. So if you're feeling very lost and you're like, I just don't know where to start, definitely read this. It's so good and it's simple. It's not gonna overwhelm you with a million and one things that you have to do with your kids. It's really just about creating a beautiful, calm, loving childhood with things that we have all around us already. You don't have to go out and buy loads of things at all. Um, and this book is really good at explaining that in a clear way. So yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how our rhythm goes through autumn. I'm definitely, even though I've got loads of uh, resources, I just love learning. So for me, this is really exciting. But in general, I imagine that our days will be very much focused on the outdoors for as long as we possibly can. Loads and loads of sensory play because that's definitely where my eldest is at and my youngest. So I have trays of like rice and Play-Doh and we have lots of like, um, you know, like things like this to play with the Play-Doh. So we'll be doing loads of sensory and then rhymes, rhythms, um, and then lots of rhymes and finger plays and short um, engaging stories um, and yeah and then a little bit of alphabet work as well which would be good so yeah I'm really really excited I will obviously be sharing my day in the life videos so you'll get a peek into our day to day life um, I know I've uploaded quite a lot of like these sit down videos recently because I had all this stuff I wanted to show you because I know so many of you have young kids too and you're interested in the Waldorf and the Steiner approach so I thought I would show you everything um, and yeah I hope you enjoyed it. So give this video a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment because I love to know who's watching my videos and come say hi. And yeah, I will be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.